guys and welcome back. Today we're going to be covering some questions off the ACT. Now we're going to focus fire specific questions about FOIL factoring and any type of question related to that content. So go ahead and stick with me because we're going to go ahead and jump right into the questions for today. So what happens when you raise an exponent to an exponent? Well, there's a lot of exponent rules out there. For example, if you're multiplying the same base with two exponents, you can add the exponents. Dividing them is the quotient rule. That means you can subtract them. But in this case, when you have an exponent raised to an exponent, you can just multiply those two exponents together. So 4 times 6 is going to give me 24, which means this final answer should be x raised to the 24th power, which is answer g. This is one of those questions that's super easy. It just looks confusing because it has so many words involved. Overall, it says that they have 5,677 trillion BTUs used on nuclear energy, 2,884 trillion BTUs of hydroelectric power. And it wants to know what's the difference between those two. So how many more of the nuclear than the hydroelectric? So all we really have to do is subtract the two numbers here. Now, since they're both in the trillions, that means our answer is going to be in the trillions as well, but we don't have to worry about that when subtracting because all those zeros will cancel out with each other. So we're just looking at 5,677 minus 2,884. If you go ahead and do that subtraction out, you're going to end up getting 2,793, which means our final answer here should end up being B. So this is actually just a distributing question and then combining like terms. So the first thing we have to do when finding an equivalent expression to this guy is to distribute this negative 3k to both of these terms. Now don't forget that it's negative because that's going to be important. I want to rewrite my 7kl. Then from there, negative 3 times 4 gives me negative 12. And because there's a k here and k here, that's going to be k squared. And then we have the negative 3 times the positive 2. So that's going to give us negative negative 6, and then we have the K and L there. Now, remember, we have a K and L right here and a K and L right here, so we can combine these two terms. Well, 7 minus 6 is just going to leave me with 1, and that's just 1 K L. And then we're subtracting still that 12 K squared, which means our final answer here is F. So anytime you see a number inside the parentheses like this of a function, that just means you're plugging it in everywhere you see an x to the actual equation. So let's go ahead and plug in this negative 3 and see our answer. Well, negative 3 squared right off the bat is going to give me 9, and that's positive because it'll be negative 3 times negative 3. That 9 times 2 is going to be 18 for our first term. Minus 3 times negative 3 again. Well, negative 3 and negative 3 multiplied together is going to give me a positive 9. And then we still have that plus 4. So when I combine these three terms together, we get 31 by adding them up, which is answer E. So this question is actually the opposite of distribution. In this case, we're factoring out a number. So if I look at all three of these terms, is there anything that would divide all three of them evenly? In this case, yes. Each of these three numbers are divisible by 3. When I pull a 3 out front, I'm then going to divide each one of these terms by that 3. So 3 divided by 3 is just 1. We don't usually write 1s when they're next to a term, so I'm just going to leave that as x. 6 divided by 3 is positive 2, so I'm going to do plus 2. And we we still have that y. And then last but not least, we have the 9 divided by 3, which is just 3. So this is going to be plus 3, and we still have our z. So if I look if any of these answers are the same as this guy right here, we can see that a is going to work. So let's look at some exponent tricks here to solve this guy out. we got to find this x right up here. So the first thing I'm going to do is actually move this number on the bottom to the other side. Now, because we're dividing, it means we're going to multiply it to the other side. And if you didn't know, you multiply two things with the same base, you can add the exponents together. So in this case, we're going to end up with 25x over here equals... 4 plus 2 is going to give me 5 to the 6th power. Now, we can rewrite 25 as 5 to the 2nd power, and anytime you raise a power to a power, so in this case it would be 2 raised to the x, that's just multiplying the two of them together. So now, since we have the same base on both sides, we're just solving what is 2x equal to 6. We'll divide both sides by 2 to see that x is equal to 3, which is answer F. If you get a question like this, you should be singing, Hi! Because this is just too easy for the ACT. Let's take a look. See, it wants us to change this expression to one of these down here. And we should know that any exponent raised to an exponent means you can just multiply the two of those together. So that's going to give us A raised to the 3 times 21, which would be 63, which means our answer here is E. 
Is this a basic foil question? I think it is. Let's go ahead and start with our first then. By foil, I'm talking about f for our first ones. We're gonna multiply the two of these together. Two x times three x is gonna give me six x squared. Then when we're looking at foil, our next one is the outside. So that's gonna be the two x times this negative two over here, which gives me negative four x. Then we're gonna do the inside in foil. So three times the three x, that's gonna give me nine x. And then we're gonna have the last, which is the three times that negative two which is going to end up giving me negative 6. Now, this middle term right here can combine together because they both just have an x. So 9 minus 4 is going to end up giving me 5x. So really, we're looking at 6x squared plus 5x minus 6. So that means our answer is k. So function notation sometimes looks a little tricky, but really isn't too bad. It says here we have negative three inside of the g function, and that answer is gonna be inside of the f function. So let's go ahead and do that. Negative three, I'm gonna plug it in right here. First thing we need to do is this exponent. So negative three squared is gonna give me a positive nine. Nine times that three is gonna give me 27. We now have our answer to the g function. We're gonna then take that and plug it into the f for x. So we're gonna be doing two times that 27 plus 10. Well, two times 27 is just going to give me 54, and if I add 10 to that, that's going to give me 64. So our final answer here is H. So we got some fraction work. Let's go ahead and get to it. We're going to simplify this expression right here. Well, in order for us to combine a whole number with a fraction, let's go ahead and rewrite it as a fraction, just like that, with the same number on the bottom. So 7, if I had it as a 5 on the bottom, would be 35 over 5. Plus that 1 is going to mean that this is going to end up becoming... 36 over 5. On the bottom, same thing. We have 1, which is going to turn into 10 over 10, which is the same thing as 1. 10 plus that 1 is going to give me 11 over 10. Now, when you are dividing a fraction with a fraction on the bottom, you can flip it upside down and multiply instead. So I'm going to remove this, put the 10 over 11 up here, and that's going to end up canceling these out, giving me 1 here and a 2 here. And we got 36 times 2, which is going to give me 72 over 11. Well, 11 times 6 gives me 66. And 72 minus 66 is 6 over 11 for a final answer of D. Well, that's all the questions we're going to cover today. So thanks for joining me. And remember, if you want to see any other test prep type questions, go ahead and check out some of these other videos over here or keep checking back for some new content. Again, my name is Daniel Caproni, and thanks for joining me today.